Chapter One, Cafe Quarrel. <laughs> Monday morning at the cafe with Ricky, Cleo, and Lewis. <laughs> uh, who wants to be Cleo? Somebody come Sarah. up. Sarah. Okay, come up. <laughs> no. Oh, Ben. Hey, Lewis. Hi, Rick. Oh, I wasn't <laughs> Ricky. Oh, Ricky. Come join me, said Cleo, waving toward her friends. Okay, <laughs> Lewis agreed, sitting down with her. Zane, the devilishly handsome friend of the group, walked into the cafe, drawing eyes from everyone, even his sworn enemy, Lewis. <laughs> Lewis diverted his attention, trying not to make his attraction obvious, especially to himself. He wasn't gay, and he had never, ever been. <laughs>
on his wheatgrass smoothie, occasionally letting his eyes wander over to Zane at the counter. Uh, <laughs> nearing the end of his drink, he almost choked on a sip as Zane suddenly was hovering over his shoulder, demanding Lewis's attention without any words at all. Lewis, he said. <laughs> I didn't appreciate how you made a fool out of me in front of the girls eat earlier. Either Lewis was too frightened to respond, or he felt silence was appropriate, for he just stared into Zane's eyes without any movement, almost like a statue. <laughs> While Lewis was thinking of a response, his thoughts were thankfully interrupted by Zane. Lewis was expecting some sort of manly outburst like Zane had typically produced, but instead, Zane simply sat next to Lewis with his head in his hands. Lewis was taken aback. I'm, I'm sorry, he stated in an almost questioning tone. Don't be. Zane paused, presumably just for a breath. Sexual touch. I mean, I've always been worse than you've ever been. Don't apologize, but I've got to go now. So goodbye. His farewell seemed to leave more questions than it had answers, but Lewis knew he wasn't going to get much better from him, especially after how he had embarrassed him in front of Cleo and Ricky. Unforgivable, Lewis whispered to himself. He's never going to see you like you see him. Not after that. Lewis contemplated going after him. He was only at the door. He could turn it all around, just like this was a movie. He played it over in his head and he smiled to himself. If only. He watched Zane take his last steps out of the cafe, knowing deep down that he would never have the courage to tell him the truth about his feelings. End of chapter one. Text talk. Tuesday morning on the phone with Cleo and Lewis. Lewis held the phone in his hands, shaking. His palms were sweaty, knees weak, and arms heavy. <laughs> <laughs> he had to tell Cleo he was gay. She was the most important person in his life. Finally, he said the text would change everything. Hey, come over later? Lol. <laughs> yeah, sure. Cool. Oh, See you <laughs> later. <laughs> Pause. Chapter. Text talk. Tuesday morning on the phone with Cleo and Lewis. Lewis held the phone in his hands, shaking. His palms were sweaty, knees weak, and arms <laughs> 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 tell Cleo he was gay. She was the most important person in his life. Finally, he said the text would change everything. Hey, come over later? Lol. <laughs> yeah, sure. Cool. See you <laughs> later. <laughs> Pause. Chapter. Losing yourself. About 20 minutes later at Cleo's house with Cleo and Lewis. Cleo opened the door after hearing two crisp, welcoming knocks. Hey, Lewis! She greeted. I'm just cooking my lunch right now. Come in! Do you want some of my mom's famous spaghetti? Her tone seemed welcoming, but Lewis wasn't certain. He was nervous, but on the surface he looked calm and ready for whatever would come. Lewis walked in, holding some type of note card filled with hardly legible scrawling. When he noticed Cleo staring, though, he quickly hid it inside his pocket taking care in the certainty of its concealment. Attempting to start a conversation with Lewis, Cleo explained, So, Lewis, what brings you over here? Are you... She was interrupted by the timer on her stove, reminding her to finish cooking her lunch. Sorry, Lewis, I'll be right back. I just have to finish my pasta, and then we'll be able to talk. An awkward start to a puzzling lunch. After she left the room, Lewis pulled out his card again, looking back and forth, back and forth over each line. While he rehearsed each word in his head, Cleo walked back in the room sooner than expected. Cleo, you're, uh, back so soon? He stuttered. The drop of the card became notice noticeably unhinged. Well, the reason that I, uh, asked to come over was that, uh, his words were making less sense with each one that passed through his lips. Cleo was frightened. Lewis, are you alright? I mean, you never talk like this. Lewis was too flustered to comprehend her words, and he was just and he just tried to focus on the words that he had written earlier. He was suddenly forgetting what he wrote down on his card. It was so close to him, but the reality of telling Cleo what she needed to know was so far, and he didn't think he could ever reach it. When he opened his mouth, no words came out. He was obviously choking, but Cleo didn't know what to say either. He snapped back to reality, feeling gravity pull him back down to earth. He wouldn't give up that easily. His thoughts were able to convince him into telling the truth. His, in his mind, he repeated, Look, if you had one shot or one opportunity to seize everything that you ever wanted in one moment, would you capture it or just let it slip? No. That's it. End of the chapter. <laughs> or the news. Immediately after, still at the house with Cleo and Lewis. Cleo, I'm in love with Zane, lol. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis chuckled awkwardly in order to ease the tension. 
I have been for a while. I wasn't sure how to tell you, so I figured it would be best if I just said it. I know that you've had feelings for me, and I wish I could say I felt that for you too. Just know that I do want the best for you, lol. I hope this doesn't change things between us. Cleo seemed to be looking through Lewis. Her eyes glossed over as she shed a single tear. I'm so sorry, he trailed off, and his words got softer the more he renounced who he was. Who he was? Cleo's lack of response and lack of acceptance broke Lewis more than anything else ever had. I, I need you to go, Lewis, she begged. Please, just go. He left the house with little confidence left. I thought she loved me. I thought we were in this together. I thought she was there for me, he thought. Walking home, he complimented the possibilities of the two of them ever going back to the way things were before. He realized that if he left her, he might never get her back. He ran to her house and knocked on the door, harder than he had before. <laughs> Cleo! He shouted. Hey, Cleo, please answer the door. We need to talk. Hearing no response, he checked to see if she had locked the door after he had left. She hadn't. He walked in and searched for his uncertain friend. Cleo, he called again as he searched through her house. Where could she be? Finally, he reached her bathroom on the second floor of the house. He knocked on the door. Cleo, are you all right? Just hurry up in there so we can talk about this. I love you. And you know that, right? His words were in vain. After 10 minutes of silence from Cleo in the lonely bathroom, he picked the lock of the door, needing to know whether or not she was all right. When he opened the door, he saw her lying, lying, cold and pale on her tile floor. In her hand were pills, so many, so, so many pills, but not nearly as many as she had taken. He reached down her, toward her neck, <laughs> try, trying not to get too many tears on her clothes, searching for a pulse of any sort. Finding no signs of life, he called the police, begging for someone to save her. Had he done this? Was it his fault? What would happen next? The uncertainty of the next few hours, days, weeks, or years pressed on <laughs> pressed on Lewis's heart like, and dug in like a knife. A knife would have been less painful than what he was going through. Cleo was his best friend. Why would she do this? His thoughts were rushing and only forced to stop by the equal rushing of police officers in the house and up the stairs. The medics grabbed her body and that was the last Lewis would see of his girlfriend until next week. <laughs> until her funeral. And that was the last of Cleo. Later End of chapter five. Oi. <laughs> Next week at the Net Juice Net Cafe with Emma, Lewis, Zane, Ricky, and Cleo's family. It was a dark and dreary day in Australia, <laughs> contrasting to the normal day. Bright skies, laughter, and always present yet undaunting danger. Be killed by various spiders. <laughs> it was the day of Cleo's funeral, and the Juice Net Cafe was covered in pictures of her, even though they looked nothing like her decaying, lifeless corpse. <laughs> Boy. Zane broke the silence. He was holding a cranberry booster in his right hand and a memorial pamphlet in his left. Stumbling to find his words and stumbling in real life, he spilled his juice all over the pamphlet, covering Cleo's bright and cheery face with blood-red stains. Everyone looked at him, Emma, Ricky, and Lewis, glaring at his eyes until he changed his clumsiness with a somewhat demure attitude. We need an Emma. Paige. Maybe, maybe. We also need a Ricky. Yeah. Emma's already Ricky. I'm having a great time over here. Uh -huh. <laughs> right now? Oh, yeah. oh, we're all in this together! <laughs> First. Wait, where is that? Oh, Emma said as if, she had been, as if she had been included in this story thus far. She pressed on. I can't believe she would leave us like this. We were, th we were the three mermaids. We were sisters. As everyone ignored Emma, Wilfred handed out drinks for a toast. The girls' favorite drinks were filling the room, surrounding them completely. Banana beatbox, wheatgrass smoothies, and mango lassies. Each person reached for a glass and promptly raised it in honor of Cleo and her magical life. As the plastic juice cups clinked in the air, Zane's drink spilled over the side, completely drenching Cleo's lifeless body in the basket. <laughs> You're a dead! <laughs> Zane realized his mistake would and the girls and Lewis open their mouths in complete shock. Close the casket! Lewis yells. Hurry up, Zane! shouted Ricky. You're, you idiot! 
said Emma. As the casket slammed shut, Zane could hear the magical sound of her transformation. Cleo was once again a mermaid, even after her death. Cleo's family shoved Zane and questioned why he closed the lid. Oi! Zane started to speak, but he was interrupted. It was too hard for us to handle. We felt a closed casket service would be easier. We'd miss her too much. Zane's face dropped. Lewis had stood up for him, even after he had ruined the funeral and disgraced Cleo for a second time. Was there something between them? Lewis whispered to Zane's ears. We need to get rid of the body. What? <laughs> Is that the end of the chapter? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. No. <laughs> so chapter six. Playdate with Ronnie, winky face. <laughs> that same day at the marine park with Zane and Lewis alone. The silence was broken. I can't believe you actually burned the body, lol, spoke <laughs> Zane. This is what she would have wanted, Lewis said, as he began to sprinkle the remains of Cleo's ashes into the water of Ronnie's exhibit. The subtle whoosh of Cleo's final transformation rang through Zane and Lewis's ears. Lewis said, shed a single tear that dripped quietly into the water next to Ronnie. I can't look up. He stared deeply into the blue water, his eyes focused on the scales silently falling to the bottom of the pool. No. Oh. Sorry. He could see the reflection of the sunset on the water's surface. St standing in silence, Zane turned his head, looking over to Lewis. He saw Lewis's true state and grew increasingly more concerned with every flowing tear. Hey, he said in a soft but comforting tone. Zane reached his, <laughs> his hand up to Lewis's face and brushed away a tear forcing them to break his gaze into the water. Zane's hand lingered contently, tracing the outline of Lewis's lips slowly. Their eyes met, and they couldn't break away. Lewis looked at Zane, his face glowing with brilliant yellow and orange from the sunset, reflecting off the silent water. The wind grew stronger, blowing Zane's jet black hair to the other side of his face. His eyes were uncovered, and they sparkled with all the beauty of the universe. The glowing brown color put Lewis deep into a trance, a spell casted on him, if only to make his body tremble. After what seemed like a million years, Zane broke eye contact, only to wrap his leather jacket. His le <laughs> his leather jacket tightly around Lewis's shoulders, pulling him slightly closer. Lewis was covered in goosebumps, despite being warm inside Zane's heavy jacket. This is actually warm. <laughs> Lewis swallowed audibly. Zane, Zane tilted his head slightly. What's wrong? He said in a soft, low voice. Despite his questioning, he continued, slowly moving toward Lewis. The world was spinning around Lewis. Everything began to blur. He was just now beginning to process things. His eyes started to fog up. He couldn't see anything except Zane's face. His head was pounding. His heart was racing. His blood pressure was rising. Everything in the world <laughs> seemed meaningless except him. His glittering hair, his eyes pulling up, his soft lips and his perfectly shaped mouth, his thick leather jacket on his arms, every single thing about him. His thoughts were interrupted by Zane's smooth voice in his ears, his angelic voice dragging him down to earth, or perhaps up to heaven. <laughs> Lewis. Zane moaned. <laughs> he couldn't remember anything except that moment. Every issue, every insecurity melted away with the touch of his lips. There was nothing in the world but them. <laughs> Suddenly, every bad thing that had happened in the past few weeks had dissolved with his single touch, his skin almost melting under the pressure of Zane's hand on his arm. They couldn't break away from their kiss, a moment so pure and magical. Lewis felt as if no other second of his life mattered whatsoever. Um, an eternity passed before Lewis was brought back to reality. Zane pulled away and stared deeply into his eyes, still keeping his hand lingering on his waist. Lewis could feel Zane's soft breath on his face. Z -Z Zane, he stuttered, physically shaking alongside his words. Lewis? I know why. The silence was unbearable. What? What's wrong? I know wh why Cleo uh, killed herself. The sun passed the horizon line and Zane's eyes no longer shimmered. Their dark brown seemed like a deep black, unfamiliar and uncertain. You what? He asked. Lewis didn't know how to respond. What should he say? What had just happened between them? Would this ruin everything? End of chapter. Where we left off at the marine park with Zane and Lewis. <clears throat> 
Lewis's heart was being torn in half. He didn't want to have to hide the truth from Zane, but he was afraid to scare him off. Slowly but surely, the tears came back, but this time, Zane was too shocked to comfort him like before. Lewis knew what he had to do. He couldn't start off his relationship on a lie. I didn't mean to. I promise. Lewis's words shattered the silence, and he pressed on. Zane's eyes grew wide with concern. I just meant to let her know that, you know, I'm... You're what? Zane asked, edging him on. He had hoped that Lewis would clarify and that things would soon make sense. A chilled wind passed over him. He shivered without his jacket. Uh, I'm... <laughs> I'm... sobbing uncontrollably into his shoulder. Zane had a slightly confused expression, but comforted him all the same. Zane rubbed small backs... Small circles. Lewis's <laughs> <laughs> back and softly crushed in his ear. After a few minutes, Lewis's crying ceased. He, pulls, he pulled away and looked Zane directly in his eyes. His expression was much more serious than it had previously been. He had to tell him. It was now or never. Lewis knew that he would be lucky if Zane even wanted to talk to him after his breakdown. To his surprise, Zane stayed, feet planted to the ground, with both hands on Lewis's shoulders. It's okay. <laughs> Wait, put him back. <laughs> yep, okay. I can't read like this, but you're all from Zane. Very intimate. Zane, you do good and really off burn. reassuringly. Why did she? <laughs> oh, it's still, it's still you. His words were slow and rugged, but he tried to make Lewis as comfortable as possible. I, I think, I think she was in love with me. She had been since we dated back in season one. Zane <laughs> 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 interrupted. I know the feeling, he said boldly. Hearing this, Lewis stopped in his tracks. Don't worry, she didn't deserve you anyway. He continued, gruff and low in pitch. <laughs> I can't believe you liked me for that long. I... Zane interrupted <laughs> Lewis once again. But you can't let anyone find out about this. It would ruin me. Zane looked off deeply into the distance. His dark, the dark sky felt as desolate as this moment had felt for Lewis. His heart broke with Zane's final sentence. sentence. Disappointed in what he thought was perhaps love, Lewis turned away from Zane, beginning to walk as far as he knew how to. <laughs> Zane, <laughs> Zane grabbed his arm forcefully, pulling it pulling him back in. They can't find out that I that I do want to be with you, Lewis. Merely centimeters away from his face because this uh, this is Australia and they use the metric system. <laughs> <laughs> they spoke words that would change Lewis's life forever. I, he started for the first time since the story began. I love you, Louie Wowie. <laughs> what the hell did he just call me? He just thought to himself deeply, contemplating their relationship. Lewis ignored the nickname and managed to choke out a response. I love you too, Zane. The moment felt right and magical, as if they were both mermaids themselves, and Cleo's scales covered the water beautifully, like rose petals. <laughs> to keep this a secret, he paused, will be difficult, but it's worth it for you. I think the best option for us is to go someplace. Lewis was clearly confused. Go someplace? He asked, hoping Zane would clarify. Make a wildland. Like, let's run away. Just you and me. The option sounded appealing. No Cleo, no Emma, no Ricky, no one but Zane. Him and Zane. He knew what his answer was. Let's go, he said with no hesitation in his voice or his mind. End chapter. Chapter 8. Bucket hat. <laughs> <laughs> that night, at Lewis's house, even though we've never seen it, and Zane and Lewis, and a hat. Oh my gosh, you Thanks for letting me stop by my house to pick up my bucket hat. I don't think I could have survived on the island without it. Haven't you read Lord of the Flies? <laughs> as if it even mattered at all. No problem, Louie Wowie. I love you and your bucket hat completely. Zane responded with a sincerity probably no one would expect from a bad boy such as him. Seriously, what was that nickname? It didn't even rhyme. <laughs> Once again, ignoring the poor choice of pet names, Lewis went inside his house to fetch his bucket hat. Quickly returning, he pulled his bucket hat over his long, weird hairstyle <laughs> and winked at Zane. 
<laughs> he loves him too. While inside, along with grabbing his bucket hat, he also managed to find enough food for a picnic and a soft blanket for their time at Mako. Are you ready? Zane asked with excitement. Boy, am I ever. <laughs> Okie dokie, hold on to your bucket hat, because we're going to take by somebody else <laughs> <laughs> And when they got you squatted for that too? <laughs> Zodiac, Zane, of course, was driving. Lewis sat next to Zane, mostly frightened of how fast he was going, but with one hand on his bucket hat and the other on Zane's thigh. Oh. 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 Zane did some bad boy tricks to hopefully impress Lewis, and although he wouldn't let him see, he actually was. Being clever, Zane stole Lewis's bucket hat from under his hand and put... That's why. You gotta do it. <laughs> on top of his own perfect hair. Zane, give my bucket hat back. <laughs> You're going to lose my bucket hat. <laughs> what, you want this? He waved Lewis's bucket hat dangerously over the water. Stop that. Give me my bucket hat back and pay attention to steering the soda. <laughs> Finally, stealing his bucket hat back, Lewis placed it back on his, on his head. The night stars glimmered deeply amongst their black canvas, and as they reflected off the deep blue water, Zane's eyes, no longer covered by the bucket hat's shadow, caught their light and sparkled once again. End of chapter. A breakfast picnic, the next morning at Mako Island with Zane and Lewis. The light reflecting off the water sparkled as Lewis's sleepy eyes eased open. He didn't want to move off of Zane's strong yet gentle chest. It was a safe haven. It was home. Zane was gently sleeping under their deep red blanket, his face peaceful and not burdened at all by their choice to run away from their old life. His eyes opened quickly and fell upon Lewis's longing face. Oi! <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, gorgeous, he greeted. Did you sleep well? Words couldn't begin to describe how beautifully he had slept. The comfort Zane had given him for each second of each of the empty nights had left him unparalleled in satisfaction. Of course, Zane. He said, staring deeply into his lover's eyes. Standing up, Lewis tried to gather himself in a professional way, but somehow... <laughs> <laughs> but somehow Zane saw his strong facade. Zane's arms reached up and clung tightly to Lewis. Lewis's shirt pulled him uh, quickly down to the ground. Lewis's body was caught by Zane's, and their faces were, pulling, were nearly centimeters away from touching. Each breath on each other's skin was demanding, and they were drawn into a passionate embrace of each other. <laughs> Just hug. Louie Wowie. Just Zane hug. muttered. <laughs> trying to acknowledge the moment. You, nice you take hug. my breath away. As, they, as if that were an invitation, Louis pressed into Zane, kissing him as if, he had never, as if he would never stop. Even though Zane's kiss was intensely passionate, Louis just kind of cringed slightly at the name. He was starting to warm up to it a little bit. After all, how could he be upset at anything Zane had to say? Breaking away from the heat of the moment, Zane, Lewis tried once more to stand up and get down to real business of the island. Come on, Zane, stop lying around. We still have to set up this picnic. A picnic was laid out in front of the boys, and with a fantastic spread of fruits and treats, it looked like a feast in the dewy morning light. See, the light. Uh -huh. <laughs> a breakfast picnic, perhaps for two lovers. Although the fruit was sweet, the only thing sweeter was spending time away from the world with Zane. <coughs> so much had happened within the past few days. Cleo's death, the burning of the body, coming out as gay, and getting the man of his dreams. Finally, Lewis was able to stare out at the ocean, take a deep breath, and have a nice breakfast picnic with his boyfriend. The time he had spent with Zane had been better than he had ever imagined. The boys weren't sure how much longer they would stay at Mako, or if they were ever going to go home. All they knew that was that at that moment, all they needed was each other. So, chapter 10, Crafty Girls. Four days later, still at Mako, with Zane and Lewis. <coughs> Even though the last few days had been wonderful, they were running out of food and water, and they had to leave. On the boat, Zane, Lewis, and the bucket hat were making their way home. I'm going to miss this, said Lewis, who was trying to hold on to their last moments in solitude. Lewis knew that the relationship would have to be hidden from Zane's father, and he knew it could only be truly real on Mako Island. But there, it was real, and it was beautiful. Lewis felt more authentic than ever before, only because of Zane. I'm going to miss this too, Louie Wowie, 
These have been <laughs> these have been the best six days of my life. You honestly mean everything to me. I can't believe Zane was interrupted by Lewis's silent crying in the back of his zodiac. <laughs> Could it really be over? All of this, their whole relationship, their whole love, gone? Don't cry, Lewis. Why are you sad? He asked, trying to cheer his boyfriend up as quickly as possible. It's just, he stuttered his words. <laughs> I just know this is going to be over between us as soon as we're back home. This has been so good, and I, I love you, Zane. You've completed me, and I don't know how to go back. I feel as if I've only just met you, but together we're everything. Now, as soon as we're back with Ricky, Emma, and Cleo's wet ashes, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go back to how we were before. Flashes! <laughs> Hidden and lying. That's not how I want to live my life. As soon as he finished, Zane's eyes went dull, and their sparkle, even in the sunlight, was lost. I don't think he tried to continue, but, but he understood Lewis's words. And his crying. It would soon be over. Felt as if we had to pause for a second. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Ready, Thomas? Yeah, I've been recording. <laughs> Within minutes, the Zodiac pulled into the marina, swarming with people. There were flashing lights, and it was busier than it had ever been before. OMG, what do you think happened, lol? Lewis asked, breaking the boat silence. I'm not sure. Let's get out and try to pass through without anyone noticing us. As they were walking, around a million eyes followed their every movement, and their plan of undetection was a complete failure. Hey, you! A voice called from one side. <laughs> you two, stop! Another yelled. The shouting might be a You played someone. Yeah. I was Cleo. The shouting... <laughs> The shouting was unfamiliar, but the boys directly complied as soon as they saw who was shouting. Police officers surrounded them in seconds. They were frightened. Is everything okay? Zane questioned, wondering what was really going on here. No! <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was so good. That was so good. Are you, are you Zane Bennett and Lewis McCartney? <laughs>
Lewis was visibly crying, and Zane didn't know how to stop it. Lewis, look at me. Zane started, but he couldn't get his lover's attention. <laughs> Oi! Zane continued slapping Lewis in the face in order to stop his obnoxious crying. I promise I will never let anything bad happen to you. You're not guilty. Cleo killed in Crafty Girl's font herself! <laughs> Zane said, trying to convince him that it would all be okay. I'm sorry I'm so dramatic, lol. Thank you so much. His lover replied, Anything for you, Louie Wowie. You're my soulmate. Still, Louis couldn't comprehend the nickname. It didn't even rhyme. <laughs> but, Zane interrupted, We have to go to my dad's mansion in order to fuel my zodiac. I have a plan, but first we need, but we need to see him first. My father, I mean. Zane choked. It seemed like he was... It seemed like he was loathing seeing his father again. What would he do? Would he support them? It didn't matter. Zane had a plan. As his lover contemplated their journey, Zane started to hotwire a nearby motorcycle. <laughs> Zane, oh, what are you doing? Nothing, babe, so <laughs> <laughs> Zane's bad boy persona was coming out again. Maybe it was the weight of his thoughts. Hop on, toots. Zane told. <laughs> immediately joined him. The rump of the hog. Lewis <laughs> wrapped his arms around his lover, holding on for dear life as they stormed down the only highway in Australia. <laughs> Hold on to your bucket hat, Lily Wowie. We're going for a wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> the thought, the very thought, chilled Lewis to his bones, and the nickname didn't help either. Uh, but he stayed on the hog for his lover. He would do anything for his lover. He was. His lover. <laughs> As they pulled to, up to the mansion, which covered the majority of the continent of Australia, the boys feared what would happen next. Zane walked up to the door, wondering if his father was even home. With six different cars in the driveway, he never knew whether his father was had even left at all. Opening the door, he saw a gloomy figure hanging over him. Oi! <laughs> <laughs> the figure boomed. I didn't think you'd have the guts to show your face here. The police told me about the two of your, uh, relationship, and let it be clear that I do not support this. The figure was Mr. Bennett, and he was clearly disapproving of his son's lover. I never thought that my son would be an Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> You're a failure, Zane, and I never want to see you here again. Why did you even come back? Zane wondered where his father had even gotten this nickname from as they lived in Australia. Using <laughs> and seemingly random, his father's words hurt. Nevertheless, Zane was on a mission to rescue his lover. Nothing would hold him back. I need some fuel for my Zodiac, and then I'll be out of here. You will never have to see my homosexual face again, Daddy! <laughs> Lewis stood shocked as his lover confronted his one true fear, his father. Fine. Mr. Bennett agreed. Take your fuel, and take your Zodiac, and take your lover, and take off. With the fuel in his hand and his lover by his side, Zane felt content for once in his life. He never needed his father except for his money. And now he could start a new life with his lover. Although happy, Zane's paradise was spoiled as through the window an angry mob was gathering in support of the arrest of his lover. Not today, losers, Zane shouted into the wind. But no one but his lover heard him. <laughs> Chapter 12, Zany Wany. <laughs> Back at the pier with Lewis and Zane and a stolen hog. <laughs> Lewis, I can't bring you along. It's too risky. There's police everywhere, and we literally just stole someone's motorcycle earlier today. We'll both get arrested. You need to stay here, and I'll bring the Zodiac around, and everything will be fine. Zane said. Okay, Lewis said submissively. But take this with you. <laughs> Pulling his bucket hat off his head, Lewis sacrificed one of his loves for his other. He trusted Zane with all of his heart and all of his bucket hat. <laughs> <laughs> Zane smiled reluctantly, but he accepted the hat anyways, as it was a reminder of his lover. Lewis, don't worry. I'm going to see you again. Zane, we been you. See you later, guys. <laughs> Lewis was changing, and Zane liked it. Zane walked away, but he turned to, <laughs> to allow a final kiss to his beloved Louie Wowie. Louis shuddered and melted like butter. He loved him. <laughs> Everything was destined to work out. He just knew it. Louis waited at the motorcycle for 30 minutes before becoming wildly confused. Zane didn't tell him where to meet. So, uh, where was Zane going? 
After a while, he was figuring it out. Say he was going to their special spot where they had their first kiss, the marine park. Lewis ran from the marina to the marine park in about 17 minutes and 23 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> he was out of breath, and he was missing his bucket hat dearly, but it was all worth it. He waited with Ronnie, look, <laughs> looking for his lover and listening for the beautiful sound of the zodiac. All of a sudden, Lewis heard a loud hum, which sounded like her on the horn. <laughs> Zane came surfing into Ronnie's enclosure on his zodiac and couldn't stop in time not to hit Ronnie. <gasps> the dolphin let out a sad squeak. <laughs> Every word he said, I love you, Zane. 